ho, ho. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas and season's greetings to all of you out there in hashtag land. It's me, old buddy Ben Cleaver with that hashtag show.com. Once again, my presence on the internet today is brought to you by all the fine folks over at Neft Vodka, the world's best tasting vodka, reminding you to please drink responsibly, as well as everyone over at toink.com. Go check them out. They still got some holiday specials up there. I recently had the honor and the pleasure of attending the Press Junket for season two of the Hulu original series, Crossing Swords. And if you want to read my interview with creators John Harvatine IV and Tom Root, as well as producer Seth Green, the trio who work together on Robot Chicken. They are bringing you this new series that's in its second season, Crossing Swords, another stop-motion animation, crass, irreverent comedy. It's hilarious. Go check it out exclusively on Hulu. Read the interview and this article attached to this video right here on that hashtag show.com. Did not get the video of that one. That was uh, off the table as far as the press junket was concerned. However, you can watch this video where I sit down and talk with voiceover legend Tara Strong, who could not have been just more sweet and fun and awesome to talk to. Talking Crossing Swords Season 2 with voice actress Tara Strong. Take a look. First of all, you play, you, you have done voice uh, voices for so many characters uh, and so many, um, you know, iconic characters. Uh, what was, was this a situation where they're like, we got to get Tara in here, you know, ASAP? Was it an offer to you? Was it something you approached like Seth and Tom and John about? Was this, how did, how did you get involved with this project to start off with? You just made me like so curious. Like, I wish I knew what the like behind the scenes talk was like. Should we get Tara on the show? That's fun. Um, I'm pretty sure. I yes, I auditioned just like anyone else, and of course they know me. I've known Seth a long time, and um, I did work on Robot Chicken mm -hmm. quite a bit. Um, but for the most part, even for um very successful voice actors, you still have to audition for certain roles, and there's inevitably a new producer, or someone in new in a position that wants to hear what you do with this character and it's sort of part of the job like people are like you still have to audition ew i'm like no that's okay that's part of what i do and um you know in in any form of acting whether it's on camera or voiceover the work is really the audition that's where you're like oh i really got to do well and, and 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 get this and then once you're in that role it's so fun it just becomes a part of you so um yes they knew who i was before and i worked with them but i did still have to audition and then you know what i did with the audition we got to call backstage there was some little tweaking and it's a very organic collaborative process when you come to a final decision on how a character should be voiced and even with that said there's multiple characters that i play on the show mm -hmm. so they'll often have to play back for me so i can remember which voice was for which character we all play multiple different roles on on um crossing swords so but you know i would do anything for seth or stupid buddy productions i think um they have their own brand of comedy i think in a world where most animation is CG and computer generated, they are so conscientious and so meticulous about bringing authentic stop motion to life. And if you ever get a chance to tour their studios, it's just extraordinary to watch how intricate these sets are, how beautifully they're built. There's just nothing is done on the cheap. Nothing is just you know oh let's throw that in there right. it's um all very meticulous and and well thought out and thank you for saying that because um i do think voiceover in particular is really one of the only legs of the entertainment business that didn't miss a beat at the mm -hmm. beginning of the pandemic and my agent um i remember i spoke to her i had a few like a-list celebrity friends they're like can you get me into voiceover because everything was shut down yeah. and my agency said no to like big celebrities and she's like if you knew how many calls we got because you know people want to do something and if you were already set up with a home studio you were way ahead of the races mm -hmm. and um the ability to make people laugh during challenging times has been a real gift and i'm very happy that hulu picked us up for a second season december 10th um because it's just more of a way to connect with people and make people laugh and i feel very grateful to be um a part of it and to be a part of making people's days just a little more fun well, and you're absolutely right. And that's exactly what I'm saying. Even I said this to, to Seth, uh, you know, if even stuff that's like crass and, and irreverent like this show is, it still provides, it's still important. It provides that escapism for people. And it has, you know, entertainment across the board, especially animation, um, you know, 
has has provided a lot of support for us over the of last. Of course, if you if you can't laugh during challenging situations, I mean, I'm sure you've heard like people that have cured themselves from diseases. Like, not that I recommend not going to a doctor, everybody. But when you're watching funny movies or you're doing things that make you laugh and make your spirit happy, it really does do something for you um, on a very important level whether it's spiritual or just you know during your day the fact that you can laugh when things are so challenging it's so important i think it's very very important just as important as anything else you know during this pandemic i started watching gray's anatomy which i never watched i can't tell you why and i started to feel kind of depressed it's like a brilliant show but a lot of it's like so sad yeah. and the nice thing about <laughs> crossing swords is there's nothing really sad even when people die or get blown up or do crazy shit because it's all funny yeah. <laughs> so it feels pretty special to be a part of things that's only bringing joy and laughter to people yeah and it's it's little peg people you can't it's little can't, peg people can't, can't feel real bad. real bad for them no. when they, when they and, explode. and you can't hate on them they're just little pegs so talk to me about the character of coral um she's a pirate uh like i said you've played so many great roles uh in your career what what is special about coral and what are you excited for season two well, it's especially exciting to have a woman of power in medieval times. You know, there's so little known of the women that were really taking charge back then. I'm sure there are instances that we'll never hear about of females doing extraordinary things on pirate ships or pretending to dress as men or whatever it is that they had to do. So to explore a character that actually went off on adventures and com commandeered a ship or whatever the heck she's doing around the world and, uh, and fearless. She's a fearless female character during a time that it has, you know, know one fascination for generations and um she's completely open about everything i mean every character on this show is there's nobody that's too shy on this show um and all the places that she got to explore um her nature her sexuality her craziness in first season is just as you say irreverent um and continues to be that way in season two and there's a lot of crazy shit that goes on and um i hope people love it just as much and hopefully they'll love it even more and then hopefully we'll get season three and four and five and six and seven there you go <laughs> and last question because i know i only have about 60 seconds left um did you record most of your uh voiceover for the show in your home studio did you go into a studio was it half and half in the beginning, in the first season, we were all together in the studio. Uh, not all together. The actors worked separately, but I was in the booth with the director and uh, writers and engineers and stuff. We were actually physically in studio. And then once COVID hit, we started to go virtual. So um, this season we recorded virtually, which was fun. I mean, I'm so grateful that I that I still get to do my job, you know, during these crazy times. And um, I think because we had all the in-person experience, we knew how to really play off each other and interact with each other you know so much of acting is listening so to be able to kind of understand how you know adam would say something or someone would say something i i would know how to respond so it's been really wonderful to have um the option to do things virtually yeah that's great well tara thank you so much for your time today i know you've got a lot more interviews to get to or have been doing a bunch or both <laughs> Um, so again thank you again for all your work i just said again five times rapid fire again 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 Thank you for all your work. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me today. Really appreciate it. Thanks again, Ben. Yeah, absolutely. Again. As I said before, Tara could not have been more of a delight to talk to. She's so sweet, a lot of fun. And we got a little look at her in-home studio there, which was kind of cool, you know, where the, uh, the voiceover magic happens. Crossing Sword Season 2 is on Hulu, streaming right now. Little Peg People, Stop Motion Animation, Irreverent Humor. It's a lot of fun. It's not for kids. Go check it out. Once again, my name is Ben Cleaver. This is that hashtag show.com. And remember, everyone, the reason I'm drinking out of this red cup is because whenever Ben Cleaver shows up, it's always a party. Happy holidays, everyone. Yeah!